Welcome to the Compounding Center Connections, where we talk about different health conditions with our partner practitioners. I'm your host, Jay Gill, the owner and a compounding pharmacist from the Compounding Center in Leesburg, Virginia. At the Compounding Center, we collaborate with practitioners, create custom medications to help our patients get better. In today's episode, we have Dr. Mary Babcock from Arteus Integrative Medicine in Great Falls, Virginia. Dr. Babcock, can you please introduce yourself to the listeners and the viewers? Sure. Thanks, Jay, for inviting me to share today um, to all of the listeners. So my name is Dr. Mary Babcock, and I'm Medical Director of Arteus Integrative Medicine, where our mission is to provide exceptional holistic cutting edge care to optimize the health and well-being of our patients. Um, we both treat, we treat both acute and chronic conditions and also work on um, preventing chronic illnesses. So I'm an osteopath um, from Chicago College of Osteopathic Medicine, board certified in physical medicine and rehab. I also served in active duty in the U.S. Army at Walter Reed Army Medical Center and I was there a teaching physician for medical students as well as residents in the 2000s. Gosh, it's so weird to say that, 2000s. <laughs> We're in the 2020s now. Yeah. Um, so while I was there, I did treat amputees and published research wow. and um, looking into novel methods of procedure and procedures for treating chronic pain, phantom limb pain. I also helped establish their ampute amputee therapeutic writing program. So that was a lot of fun. Um, upon transitioning the private practice, um, I have been able to integrate both diagnostic and holistic methods to develop comprehensive treatment plans for my patients. And we've enjoyed working with you, Jay, and your compounding center for um, several years now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Babcock. Now, to our listeners, just a disclaimer that everything discussed on this podcast is for informational purposes only, not for diagnosis or treatment. So let's begin. First of all, Dr. Babcock, I am very intrigued by where you got the name of your practice, Arteus Integrative Medicine. Could you tell us how you came up with that name? Yes, I'd be happy to. A lot of thought did go into that. Um, I studied Latin through high school and college and found um, that the word Arteus, which is Latin, um, embodies our vision for the practice of how we want to practice medicine. In Latin, Arteus means artful perfect, complete. So in our entrance way, we actually have a quote from Hippocrates uh, on the wall, and it says, wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. So that quote just embodies the culture of our clinic. Um, we try to implement our cutting edge techniques and also be creative and think outside of the box um, to, you know, compassionately care for our patients. And we also recognize that the environment also plays a role in the part of the healing process. So we've prepped our whole area to, as soon as the patient walks through, through the door, to be calm and serene, um, to have a healing experience for anyone who walks in. I, I can tell you from being to your clinic, uh, the environment is definitely there. You know, it's a very calming, you have the waterfall going. So it's, 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 it's really nice, calming environment. So, you know, today's topic is we're discussing about regenerative therapies. Could you tell to our listeners, it's, it's a quite a broad term, but what is it and, how, uh, and what are these therapies in your practice? Absolutely. So regenerative therapy, in, in my opinion, involves any intervention geared to help the body heal itself and restore itself um, in the least invasive method possible. So that can span anywhere from anti-aging, to um, you know, trying to repair from injury um, without surgery and uh, different things that um, that fall into that are you know platelet-rich plasma therapy, prolozone therapy, prolotherapy, stem cell injections. Um, so a whole gamut of procedures fall under that. Uh, part of our way to figure out which method will actually help is um, our extensive diagnostic testing. Um, so we also have, uh, we're the first actually, first clinic in Northern Virginia to implement this type of testing. And it's the only non-invasive testing available right now that actually can assess for endothelial damage. And so we can also learn about how to prevent microvascular disease or, or heal it um, with our regenerative therapies. Gotcha. So, um, 
what types of conditions would, uh, you mentioned prolotherapy, prolozone. So uh, tell me what types of conditions uh, can regenerative therapies fix? Give us some examples. So it can help with acute injuries as well as chronic. You know, an example of acute injury, like a shoulder labral tear or a meniscal injury um, through sports or even just, you know, recreational activities. Um, it can help with chronic pain as well. Um, when you have bone on bone joints um, and you may not be, you might be too young to get a re knee replacement therapy, for example, um, but you know, the steroid injections don't help anymore. Um, you may not be a candidate for PRP, which is using your own platelets to inject in the knee, but you may be a candidate for ozone injections or, or stem cell potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, I, you know, you, um, you're using terms like PRP, prolozone. I just wondered <laughs> if you could potentially, um, can you share like a case or a success story with us so I can understand this a little bit better? Um, you know, uh, can you share some success stories? Oh, sure. We, I actually have a few. So we, we've been doing this type of therapy for, you know, a few years now. And, um, you know, one story that comes to mind is uh, we had a D1 athlete recently with uh, who sustained a complete ACL rupture during a tackle at the last game of the season. And so we were able to treat him within two weeks of his injury with PRP as well as stem cells, followed by prolozone injections. Um, after he had completed all those injections, it was probably about three to four weeks out from his injury, and he was already getting some... Um, atrophy in his thigh muscles. And so we actually also have um, high intense focus electromagnetic therapy, um, high fem for short, that we were able to implement on the muscles of his thigh to help stabilize the knee, increase the strength. And then he was able to proceed with sports specific physical therapy. So the success, like he was feeling better, he felt more stable, but then the ultimate test, let's check your MRI out again. And the repeat MRI did show approximate, approximation and healing of his ACL. Gotcha. And he actually was able to return to play the next season. Wow. Wow. Uh, any other success stories? Yeah. Uh, so that perhaps? was one. Um, yeah. I have another one. So uh, this other one is a female, older, postmenopausal, um, had uh, suffering from adrenal fatigue, uh, depression, as well as difficulty walking due to hip pain. After our lab testing, we implemented, you know, strategies to optimize her nutrition with supplements and diet specific to her deficiencies. Um, she also went a series of customized vitamin and mineral infusions where she experienced almost immediate energy and mood elevation. And uh, for her hip pain, we did a couple of injections with PRP and stem cell. This was followed up by four sessions of the High fem, the high intense focus electromagnetic uh, treatments for her abdominal muscles. And this was important to increase her core strength. She hasn't really, hadn't really worked out for a long time because of her hip pain. And she was also very busy with her like, you know, 10, 12 hour days. So um, we wanted to increase her core muscles and prevent injury and help her advance quicker in PT. So the advantage of high fem, it's actually 30 minutes of this treatment on her abdominal muscles is equivalent to 22,000 crunches. This has been studied and proven and published as far as they've seen on uh, radiographic studies of CAT scans of the muscle, how the muscle actually gets built up with the treatment and is sustained for up to three to four months. So the goal for these patients is they, we build up their muscle, but then they themselves can maintain it with their own home exercise program. So, Dr. so, Rabka, so that was, uh -huh. uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, can you explain to us in a, uh, um, like, what does, what is PRP and what is stem cells and what is the high frequency? Can you just like explain to us in a layman's term, like what exactly is that? And perhaps like how long um, does somebody have to be on all three or can it be one over the other? And how long would this therapy be? Sure. Yeah, I, I realize I'm throwing a whole bunch of acronyms at you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you for letting me explain. So um, PRP okay. is stands for platelet rich plasma. And that is derived from the, the patient themselves. 
So how we get that is, um, let's say the patient's scheduled for an injection. They arrive at our clinic one hour before, we draw their blood, and it gets um, spun down and prepped so we can isolate their own plasma. So that's the nice thing about the PRP. It is the patient's own cells. Um, when someone's older, uh, maybe has a lot of other conditions like, um, you know, diabetes or whatever, um, vascular disease, you know, their, um, their platelets, they might not have as many um, healthy platelets that would really do much, not much growth factors. Um, and the same with the stem cells, you know, uh, other labs in the area, they will, or clinics in the area, they will harvest your own bone marrow from your hip and um, prep your stem cells in the lab. But the older you are, a lot of um, patients that their, their age limits them from getting that treatment. So um, the stem cells that we use are actually harvested from healthy live births, umbilical cord tissue. So not umbilical cord blood, but the tissue and uh, with consent of the parents and it gets um, prepped in a lab and, and formulated where they also add hyaluronic acid oh. and um, medical signal cells are also in that bunch. So you get 750,000 cells in two cc's of the formulation. Um, so that, that's the stem cell part. And um, what's nice about using uh, this type of formulation is these cells are completely undifferentiated. They're not from cord blood. So they will not trigger um, the immune response. There won't be a rejection of the cells by the, the patient getting the injection. And it's very well received. So that's what's nice about that. Um, also, uh, then you have the high frequency electromagnetic therapy. Um, that is a device we have um, that is just a quick way to enhance muscle strength. Okay. Um, I, you know, having been in physical medicine and rehab, treating so many back pain patients um, and chronic pain patients, a lot of those folks are not able to do sit ups or crunches um, uh, because of the degeneration in their spine. But being able to build that muscle uh, can actually alleviate neck pain, back pain, because you're actually sitting, um, you know, properly. It improves your posture. You feel that after the first treatment. Um, do you have to do all three? No. Um, it uh, the cases I cited, they they pretty much they end up utilizing all of that and had great success. But just depending on what you're trying to accomplish as far as a patient, you know, what the patient's trying to accomplish. Not everybody needs a high fem. Not okay. everybody needs stem cell. Sometimes you can just do prolotherapy with just dextrose and lidocaine. And um, we do that a lot, actually. And you don't need to get more esoteric or complicated than that. Um, because the goal is just to restore the structural integrity. Gotcha. And um, the way we do it, you know, if you Google, um, PRP or prolotherapy, a lot of times um, a patient may need several treatments like, oh, you need, you might need six to eight or whatever. Um, that's not the case in our clinic because we actually um, do several things differently and uniquely. I always make sure their alignment is in place. So we uh, start off with osteopathic manipulation um, to make sure they're in good alignment. And then we do the procedure but then we also brace them. Um, nothing too obtrusive, but you know, a simple neck brace if we're going to do treatment on the neck, um, just for two days. Uh, and then they're returned to regular activity after that. The reason for that, why just two days and why even at all, is if we're trying to restore structural integrity and we, we inject these cells or this solution into where the ligaments are, the ligaments and tendons attached, and so there's a lot of remodeling that, that we trigger with this. Most of the remodeling takes place within the, the next 48 hours after the injection. So we wanna capitalize on that. And we want the ligaments and the tendons to be strengthened when it's in the non-stretched position. So that's where you get the, the most stability. And, um, and so unfortunately not all 
doctors who practice regenerative medicine do it this method. And so in that case, you would need multiple injections. Uh, so this way, you know, sometimes you're just one and done um, for a lot of patients, depending on how much damage to the joint there is. Um, there are a couple of patients who might get a repeat stem cell, you know, after six to 12 months. But okay. uh, for the majority of the patients, it's like a one and done as long as they don't re-injure themselves and <laughs> dislocate their joint for some other accident or whatever. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so that's a nice thing about that. Um, so thanks for explaining the difference between the PRP and the stem. Um, now, I know uh, you also use um, NAD infusions in your practice. Could you talk to us a little bit about that and how that complements uh, uh, the entire regenerative ther therapy section in your, uh, in your practice? Um, yeah, the more I learn about NAD and its uses, the, the more excited I get about it. Um, you know, when, when I first uh, introduced it to our practice, it was really for the research that I, I had learned about how it helped um, a lot of centers decrease the opioid usage of their patients. Oh. And, um, and so it decreased the withdrawal effects and um, decreased... It also adjusted the receptors in their in their brain, so they actually didn't crave um, the opioids. And their perception of pain, them needing the opioids for the pain, it 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 kind of reset that. So we were able to successfully wean a lot of our chronic pain patients down on their opioids, if not off, and they were able to sustain that without increased suffering. Like they didn't need. Uh, somehow their perception of pain was also altered. So that's, that's why I first introduced it to the practice. Um, but over the last couple of years, there have been more and more research on NAD. So what does it stand for? Let me start there. <laughs> Another <laughs> acronym, right? Um, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It is actually a derivative of B3. And it is um, one of the molecules that is uh, crucial to the production of energy in our mitochondria. So the mitochondria is like the little engine in each and every of, in, in all of our cells that gives us that energy molecule, you know, back to like college or high school biology, the ATP production. Mm -hmm. And what's great about that is um, when you have that uh, going, it actually triggers a lot of uh, cascade of reactions in our body. There is this certain type of molecule. There's a, a, it's a class of molecules in our body called SIRT1, and there's two, three, four, and so on. But these sirtuins, um, more and more research has been done on them. And sirtuin1 in particular has a process in its actions that's dependent on the NAD. So um, when the NAD, if you increase those serum levels, it actually triggers these sirtuins to do their work. And um, the basic, generally speaking, what they do is they help prevent aging. They help prevent degradation and they also help promote um, repair in mm -hmm. your own body. Gotcha. Um, what's great is, uh, let's see, there was something published in, I wanna say May of last year, May, 2020. They actually did a study on increasing NAD levels in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And they found that the actual inflammation in their condition was decreased and their pain was improved and the mobility in their joints were improved. There was also another study um, showing that increased NAD levels in the patient serum, that these patients found decreased whole body mass and increased lean body, body mass. So, oh, wow. excuse me, decreased whole body fat and increase lean body mass. Okay. Um, so, so there's that. And um, in, uh, and the most recent one is, especially with sirtuin one in particular, um, when that gets triggered to do its work, it has been shown to actually repair endothelial damage. Gotcha. And that's what I'm really excited about now because now we have this non-invasive way to test if you even have endothelial damage and um, impaired microvascular disease. Um, so 
you might not have any symptoms per se. You might have, yeah, just a little bit of high cholesterol, maybe a little bit of high blood pressure, but everything's fine, right? But if we're able to repair that microvascular disease and, and see it objectively improve with our interventions, we can prevent chronic renal failure, we can prevent congestive heart failure, we can prevent amputations if you're a diabetic because of, you know, prevent peripheral vascular disease, prevent dementia from microvascular disease in the brain. So it's really exciting to have tools and a way to actually track that. And, and patients, you know, they get their results pretty quickly. We review it with them and they're able to see after we repeat it in three to four months an improvement. Wow. That's a lot of information. Good information. <laughs> I know we have a little bit more time. I, you were talking to me about another patient in a car accident, and I'd let you kind of uh, talk about, about that uh, uh, case study. Oh, sure. So, um, you know, I've somehow gotten a reputation of um, dealing with a lot of Ehlers-Danlos patients. I mean, I myself have, what is Ehlers-Danlos? It's, it's a genetically... Um, passed down condition of hypermobility. So I had a patient with um, diagnosed Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So that means she's, she was double jointed or at least hypermobile. So she maybe hyperextended a lot of her joints. And after the car accident, um, it wasn't, you know, she had a little bit of whiplash. She didn't have any loss of consciousness, but since that car accident, she had been getting like lightheaded, um, heart palpitations, headache, neck pain. And when we did flexion extension x-rays of her neck, we actually saw some vertebra slipping, you know, about two, three millimeters uh, when she moved bending forward and bending backward. Um, nothing that any surgeon would touch, right, but very clinically significant for her. So um, doing prolotherapy injections to tighten those ligaments in her neck, actually within a week, she felt her neck was, she didn't feel like a bobblehead is what she said. And she felt like her, her head and neck were more stable within like seven to 10 days, her headaches diminished. Um, she still had the, um, what do you call it? Those sensations of the lightheadedness, but there were, the frequency was much diminished. Um, we did some NAD IVs with vitamins with her and that improved her brain fog that gave her energy. So very good outcomes for her with those two things. Well, Dr. Babcock, you have shared a wealth of information with us and, you know, how you bring about how you practice, how you get the holistic approach and some cutting edge therapies. Also, um, how would somebody go about uh, getting in touch with you? Um, uh, and can you share some information? Oh, sure. So we are located on the, um, intersection of Georgetown Pike and Walker Road, right in the heart of Great Falls, Virginia, not far from Loudoun County, not far from UJ, probably 20, 20 30 minutes, right? Yep. Um, we do have a toll-free number. It's 844-927-8487. And you can actually text that number as well as call. And, and we, we're happy to take on new patients. Well, we're going to put uh, your contact information and your website address and all that in the description of this podcast. So um, it'll be readily available. And uh, once again, Dr. Babcock, thank you for joining us. I am Jay Gill, and I can be reached at j at compoundingcenter.com. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.